Welcome back Hi. to the... <laughs> Hi, Charles. Well, Charles Hogan again. experienced that. No, Hi. So we'll commit Hi. to the start. Hi. We'll commit to the Hi. start. Hi, everyone. Hi. All good? Yeah, thanks. That, that was actually my leg right there. Uh, okay. Well, welcome back. Thanks, What's been happening? Too. Guys, remember YouTube, Spotify, like, subscribe, do all that right now. Now, do it again. No. Now, top right here in corner. No. Three dots on Spotify. Oh, I've been making so Where much else? money. Soon to get a Ferrari. Yeah. And that speaks a lot about our mental stability. Mental stability. Correct. Big time. Big time. Big so time. if you've got a Ferrari, we made about how you made enough money to buy a Ferrari. We made 54 pounds from YouTube. That's huge. Oh, you won't but, fucking see a cent of that, mate. That hurts to yeah, hear. You might see a cent. Char. But it's actually pennies and pounds, so it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Unless you're a Forex trader. <laughs> it's just a little gag. I am actually, yeah. Oh. Should we crack into some questions? Flight. Again, with time is of the essence, but well, let's get time going. Time is always of let's the essence. Let's get the fans what they want. All right. I'll start. How to be more flexible, bruh. Uh, you need to train to be flexible, I would say. Resistance training under load into deep ranges of motion aka squatting getting to a good squat to full range of motion whether that's front squat back squat search whatever helps you get to the best range single yeah. leg work bulgarian split squats elevated bulgarian split squats deficit reverse lunges rdls hinging learn how to hinge properly learn how to create space in the hip and the glutes deep tier yes. plyometrics Jefferson curls, they're all very good. Side bending exercises, exercises where you have to work into a deeper range of motion that you'd normally, that you'd be uncomfortable getting to. The question of flexibility should be replaced with not just the word flexibility, but power in deep ranges. Mobility. Mobility, there you go. You don't want to be flexible because that means you're just unable to move out of it. You want to be mobile in deep ranges. You could also just be really flexible and it's not particularly useful. Like you could get like some guy who's like, yeah, I'm going to do yoga and he's like got a really good back band, thoracic bridge, and it's just completely useless because he's really weak. So you want to be strong. If you you can do a thoracic bridge and get into a full back band and you're really strong pushing away in that range of motion, that will will for sure be useful. But again, you've got got to work on those ranges of motion that you want to get into. For me, RDLs, elevated RDLs, you feel that when you are training, you feel that gain. That is extremely transferable. Okay, let's De- move on. Deficit reverse lunge, you feel that? That's a great exercise. Gets the yes. adductors really and strong. And elevated BSSs as well. I feel that in times where, I'm trying to think, like where I'd be pretty uncomfortable usually, maybe like when I'm defending double outside, sorry, just outside Ashi, and someone's trying to get heel hook and I'm in that pigeon stretch position, I've got to kind of work my way up, you know. Yeah. Also, side note on those exercises that, you know, when you're into a depth, when you're going into like below parallel of... A hip flexion exercise, e.g. like squat, Bulgarian split squat, deficit reverse lunge, the adductors get hit massively. So if you want to increase your ability to squeeze people with your legs, e.g. Silvio Tanasana, that's his last name. That's perfect pronunciation. Of his last name, yep. Uh, getting Having a very good squat and single leg squat pattern is extremely useful for strengthening those deep adductor muscles. That's it. That's all I had to say. Nastaza. Okay, let's carry on. Trying to play RDL and op controls my two legs and forces headquarters. How do I stop this? You have to grab his leg and pull your hamstring into his shin. That's all. Let's move on. How do you break the opponent's grip if he locks his hands when you go choy bar? Transition to triangle. There you have the answer, champ. Either go to triangle or go to the back. Or sometimes you can break the grip, but... Not really. Like if they're connecting their hands, it's very hard to break the grip for the mm. most part without squashing their hands together or something like that. So yeah, I would just try and get to the back. When they're connecting their hands, they can't block you with their hands. So you can circle around their body, whether you're upside down or not. My life's upside down right now. Yeah, sucks, man. Chaos. Jacob. Yeah, it's chaos. Perfect warm up for grappling class. Uh, I would say e- either do the designated warm up that's at your club. Or if that's really shit, I would say do some deep tier plyos, some light tier plyos, get the abs work. What was that noise? That's my alarm bike. Oh, okay. Bike Fucking prick. Fucking prick. Fucking Fuck arsehole. You. Fuck you. Get the, uh, get the abs fired up. Get the glutes working. That's enough. Um, yeah, for a jiu-jitsu class, that should be absolutely fine. 
I would love to do more of those wrestling style warm ups in a bigger class consistently. Like every time if I went to jiu jitsu class, it was like a fucking it would take too long. 15, 20 minute warm up. Yeah, but so let's say the class is two hours. Okay, yeah. That would be fantastic. Let's say yeah, it's a proper half an hour. Let's usually. say it's a proper competition led class. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you're going to get world class coaching there, whatever. Yeah. And the warm up is like a, rest, a proper wrestling warm up. I think yeah. that'd be fantastic. Yeah. I feel like it's a bit draining. Like it can almost be too much compared to the actual amount of sparring that you end up Let's doing. say it's 15 minutes versus half an hour. You go, right, guys, 15 minutes. Start with just a little jog. That, that's enough. Like, start with some... No, no, no. Here you go. This would be my ultimate, right? Start with some light tier pliers, move into deep tier pliers, and then you can move into some gymnastics gymnastics movements. You could go, okay, guys, let's look and do some handstand movements, some cartwheels, some... Would you put forward rolls and all that stuff? Yeah, uh, there's forward I rolls like forward and rolls, head, head bounce rolls. rolls, whatever they're called. Head springs, you could just do different variations and regressed versions of head springs rather than the coach being like, just do a forward roll. You just, yeah, you could do, you could make some good varieties in them. Yeah, they do definitely do deep tier pliers in the harder ones. They make you do that like low ceiling bounce, but it's, yeah. it's for a long time. It's not just up and down once and it's very small bounces the whole way down. So you start to feel it on your calves fucking die the, where, where i did it was legion res, wrestling in walthamstow central they do a long half an hour warm-up with sprints as well i feel like the sprints are pretty good because yeah. you know it's fun it's also like you know you improve a little bit each week at the sprint and you can feel yourself getting faster and it really helps the cardio as well as just like sprints open up the lungs you know a lot yeah. of smokers there so <laughs> <you know. laughs> i imagine they appreciate it yeah yeah good Come. That's good, what I think. Good, yes, good, Go very on. nice. Mm. Okay, how to escape mount when partner sprawls the hip heavy to one side? Multi-directional kipping. So if they sprawl to one side, generally it means they have like a underhook on that same side and they know that you can't really bridge them to that side. So that's why they sprawl to that side. So I would still try to basically bridge them to the side that they're sprawled on where you kind of can't bridge them because you're being turned to that side. And then I would bridge back to the side you actually want to take them so if you just bridge in one direction they can bias their weight to one side and it's very hard if you bridge in both directions it becomes more complicated for them to adjust and keep all the position if you're completely stuck though you're completely stuck basically there's not much you can do other than just trying to kip as hard as you can to make them pose the hand that's why mount is good you yeah it's good uh, you told me that that kipping that kipping motion a while ago it works i'm getting better at it uh like so don't just don't just try and like yeah, I did to Faris today. I kipped one side, then I slightly kipped the other side. Then I went back to the same side, Perfect. and then I said, "Yeah." So like, I faked it. So I did. Oh, I'm gonna go this way. Not too much effort. Not too much effort. Big effort. And then yes. wiggled the legs, and I was out. Free as a bird. Yeah. Everyone's got a fucking strong bridge, but sometimes you find that bridge isn't really effective when they're already leaning one side or something. Multi-directional. So little bridges where you don't let your feet come off the floor. You do a little bridge where your feet don't come off the floor. Like you can do a big bridge where you kind of like almost bounce off your hip. But if you do a little bridge one side mm -hmm. and then before they have fully centered their weight again, you bridge back to the other side, you'll get the compounding effect of their weight coming back to center and your bridge going to the opposite side. So it'd be too difficult for them to basically adjust their weight in both directions quickly. And then you'll get their center of mass off to the side and then you can start kipping to save yourself. It really works. Got some good bounces off. Really off my, works. Uh, off me from that technique. Okay. I have a good question from someone. Can you make a tier list of best to worst footlocks based on percentage for gi and no gi, please? I will just refer you to less impressed, more involved I websites. Say, me, yeah. He has He's basically that. I'm sure it's in like a YouTube video of his. I don't know where he gets the time or what is exactly going on with him, but he <laughs> has an enormous amount of time and knowledge on jujitsu and seems to just like... Like his, I, I actually have no idea how he makes that reason. What's the thing called again? His like. Outliers. Outliers database. I have not, because he literally lists like. Let's That's say, his profession though. He's, he's literally built up all of this to build that platform, which he's look at. He'll probably have like a thousand people on that platform paying whatever they pay. Yeah. And that's, that's good income. There Fair enough. I remember when he started, well, not when he started exactly, but when he was still small, it's like, why have these videos got like 2K views? And they were just such good videos. And then he did this database. And at yeah. first, obviously, the database was in its production yeah. phase. But he basically, like, let's say you have, like, I don't know, transition from side control to mount. 
He will have like a thousand different examples from random matches, and I don't know how he compiles them all. He'll like, be using he'll be using AI. There'll be some kind of AI app that will help him do that. That compiles when you get from side control to to mount. I guess you can just tally up the times when people have scored four points from going from side control to yeah. Mount. Shout but, less impress more involved. He, he, if he if he will watch this, if he if he does watch this, then get back to us on the, the footlocks. Yeah, actually, he doesn't even need to. Just type in footlocks to his outliers. Yeah. Go buy outliers. Go, Go get outliers. Go get message him. What a man. Cool. You me. Um um um. Ooh, 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 ooh. Kettlebells as main and powering method. Uh, okay. Empowering. Yeah, I don't know what that empowering means, but I think he's just trying to say like power, power main power exercise. Um, no. I mean, if that's all you got available, no. Yeah, great. Then that's all you got. That's all you got available. But if you've got access to squats and deadlift barbells and stuff, I'll probably choose that. Kettlebells serve as a great warm up. You could definitely make them hard if you got fifty or forty kilo. Gob- goblet squat or let's say you can only goblet squat 20 kilos at the best of times that'll be perfect for you build up your swings put up your kettlebell deadlift clean variations you can get strong with kettlebells there's no doubt about it what's a nice replacement for swings if you don't have a kettlebell deadlifts okay fair enough go to the gym go do deadlifts that's what you should do are they the same you could movement exactly pretty much Oh, okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's not gonna. It's not gonna make you more powerful. Oh, it's gonna give me really heavy hips. No, it's not. It'll. It'll make you strong. Good bridge, right? Yeah, good bridge. Give no. you a good bridge. Yeah. Uh, I'll get another quick one. Um, what sets do you do for gun work? I'm lacking. Uh, at the end of the workout, but you should do one to three sets of anywhere between ten to twenty reps of arm work. Here's a quick one for you. You could go. What we did today: bicep curls, one to three times 10 to 15 dips one to three times 10 to 15 weighted yeah and you could do a pinch grip carry one to three times 30 to 60 seconds there you go that's it that'll be what do you think pounds, about please. deficit that'll be, that'll be 100 pounds please. what's it called oh do you take cash yeah, yeah we're cashless we're cashless okay yeah uh what do you think about what the negative reps on curls i used to find them really fucking you like that. sending me yeah yeah back in my made up gym routine days they're good yeah maybe we throw some in eh because i always find like the way up on the curl is hard but if you control the way down fucking hell the eccentric, it's gonna it's get more it's hell. what you know what it is it's more mechanical tension more mm. time under tension more muscle yes. stimulation more muscle stimulation more growth yes hardest to recover from but that's fine you'll recover fine yeah. you get a good night's sleep a bit creatine yeah. yeah, not even taking creatine anymore. Are you not? Why not? No, just... What happened? I feel like I'm eating in enough meat. I got blood work done when I went to the A&E and they said, you're taking too much creatine. I had just eaten four steaks to be... Not steaks, but like four large pieces of meat. You should still take creatine. Probably will get back onto it, yeah. Fair Look at enough. me. You should still take creatine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, come on then. Uh, what moves should I teach my boy who's about to go pen and serve a four stretch? Guillotines, arm drags? That's a good question. I'll probably start with... Definitely guillotines. Yeah, guillotines and probably a lot of close guard work, my friend, and play some donkey guard. I'll leave that to you. Reverse close guard. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's just donkey guard. That yep. is donkey guard. Just in case. Yeah. In the showers. Reverse and close guard is donkey guard. So yeah, play some donkey guard, play some close guard, and no one will ever, you know, try and get misogynize you without getting punished for it yeah cool 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 thoughts on t- turkestone for muscle recovery um it's probably not going to do much for you to be honest mate again let's have a look at the photo no mate you'll be absolutely fine just getting eight hours of sleep training really hard in the weight room and <laughs> eating lots of protein yeah. that's what you should do train really hard in the weight room make sure your sessions are- i'm going to put out a video later today what a full body session should look like. I've done it a thousand times, but the intensity that you should be working at to make gains is important. Mm. You don't just go to the gym and not work hard. You're there to work hard. And the harder you work, the more you'll be rewarded. I find the people who are most successful in the gym, unless they're like already very disciplined, is people that go with their friends. Oh, with your friend, obviously. We had a good time today. Yeah. Myself and Char, for example. Great time. Uh, but no, 
countless examples of people that used to go to the gym with their friend, then their friend stopped going and they completely cut out the gym because they just don't have the motivation. You know, it's important to work hard and play hard. If it's all work, you just won't go. You'll be dreading it. And if you go, you'll just kind of doss through the session, get, get through it without really working hard. If there's a bit of play between, it lightens it. It makes it more bearable. You look forward to parts of it. You hate other parts. That's fine. You have balance. Fair play. That's yeah. a good tip. Get a friend and go with. Because honestly, if I wasn't doing jiu-jitsu, believe me, I wouldn't go to the fucking gym. <laughs> <laughs> Next right. question. Sprint. Oh, oh, No, you go, Char. No, you. You go, right? You. I'm listening. Sprinting for overall athleticism. I think sprinting is fantastic. Especially if you're good at it. It's an empty plyo, am I right? Of sorts. Potentially ping to it's up plyo, man. Whoa. Sprinting ping. is very hard to do. It's very athletic. It's going to help increase strength in your legs, for sure. It's going to help increase... Pa- oh, classic question. How do I increase power? Sprint. Do fast things. Sprinting will increase your power. Mm. Strengthen the hamstrings. I it, would like to sprint a bit more. It's very good to do. I Sh- rate it. Should we do some sprints on the bike or does that count as a sprint? No, no, like running, sprinting. Does sprinting on the bike count as sprinting in some way? No. Nah. No, nah, fair enough. No, nah, you want the, it's the, the, bi- the biomechanics of, of smashing sprinting the floor. fucking running hard. But then at the end, you're just floating, aren't you? Just... Yeah, it's a very... Te- it's, it's technique dependent as well. If you, if you want to work on the... If you have good technique sprinting, yeah, fuck, you just float. you'll move fast. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's great for improving our overall It's almost like they're on a bike already when they're doing good technique sprinting. Yeah. That's what it looks like. It's like Their a, head does not go up or down. It just glides across. It's like a pendulum kind yeah. of effect. Nice. Yeah, so I'd say, if, look, look, if you wanted to do sprinting, you could just do it one or two times a week. Probably twice a week you can get good benefit from it. If you have the space uh, available to you, it serves as a great, you know, Warm up, not even warm up, like as a workout for your before your weight session. Couple of sprints, you know, three times. I don't know. I'm not a sprint coach, but it, it could be helpful. Three, four times, fifty meters or hundred meters. Good, good sprint. Big rest in between. It's time consuming though. Sprinting. Yeah, because yeah. you need rest. Because you want to. What work happens up is to you want to you want to have enough rest to repeat the same intensity that you just performed earlier. Otherwise, it's not sprinting. It's just running. Yeah. Yeah, so sprinting is fucking good. It has to be going as hard as you can. Yeah, you know, I, I would say, yeah, one one to two times per week of sprinting, if you have the facility available to do so, is fucking good. You could do 20 meters, you could do 50 meters, you could do 60 meters, up to 100. 100 is obviously going to be harder. But, you know, let's say four to six sets of 20 meter sprints could be useful for you. It's going to improve your overall athleticism, ability to move fast, no doubt. Fair play. I'd like to do some sprints again. Yeah, That'd I love be a it. throwback. What fun it would be. All right, do you tap to ankle locks? Yeah, if properly applied, I will tap like a, like a, you know, jiu-jitsu Guy player tapping, losing. Yeah. I don't yeah. tap, mate. Yeah, I definitely would. I just think that most people don't really understand the interplay between outside heel hooks and straight foot locks. But when you get EG a Jacob Couch and he starts to wrap, or a Shashinsky, and you feel that grip come on and you try to spaz out and spin and you don't spaz out and spin, you will feel the fear in your in your veins and you will know that ankle locks can break your shit big time man yeah big time yeah Cha. also just having a broken ankle is that would be just terrible my yeah. ankle hurts a little bit now chaos. and it's mild chaos absolute upside chaos. down um daily mobility routine recommendations mate join my program i've got two days of mobility on there go do that honestly it's 29 quid go check it out you love it Tips to get a good inversion off from RDLR, please, geez. All right, so first tip is you need the off balance. You need the balance off. So to get a good RDLR inversion, part of it is you spinning between their legs and part of it is them kind of falling over the top of you or leaning forward, right? You can't really invert if they keep backstepping because you'll lose angle on the shin. So yeah, you want them leaning forward as you go for it. Another thing I would say is like good pendulum with your outside leg to bring your hips high off the floor or at least not, maybe not high off the floor, but at least to spin quickly between your partner's uh, legs, right? That's basically the goal of the invert is to get your knee past your partner's li- line between their two knee, basically past your partner's ass. So, you know, the more you can ab crunch fast with power and the more you can, you know, and basically bring your knee to your chest, the better you'll be able to invert true 
and also if you have a high degree of flexibility in your hamstrings you'll be able to do it in a short in a smaller space there you huge. Go. huge huge why do combat sport athletes do floor press instead of regular bench press uh, maybe when you're they're being filmed and you see that film, it's just a point in their program that they have chosen to do floor press. Maybe they do bench press at other times. Floor press is a fine exercise. Um, is it better or as good as normal bench press? No. I'd, I'd say just do normal dumbbell bench press or normal bench press. They're probably Equally trying to mimic good. it, aren't they? Yeah, it's this thing about mimicking the sport. Remember, I saw a very good video the other day with a very clever... Strength and conditioning coach. Shout out Will, Rite- Will Ritelli. I thought you were going to say someone else. <laughs> Steven life's work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> life's, life's work. work. My life's work. <laughs> <laughs> on. Um, what was he going to say? Let the gym be the gym and let the sport do the sport. Yeah. Don't try and mimic the things that you do in the gym in the weight room. The best way to get the most out of the, out of the weight room and the purpose of the weight room is to grow muscle tissue, stimulate muscle fibers, nervous system, tens of ligaments so you can get stronger and make general adaptations so that by the time you go to your sport, you're already strong, in good shape, more athletic, and you can move your body through better ranges of motion to make yourself more resilient to injury so you can perform better and for longer at the sport. That's it. I also wouldn't say that floor press necessarily mimics the sport more. Even though you'll be on the floor, you're rarely going to be like flat on your back, just pushing straight in front of you. Correct. What good will that do? You're better off being on your side and you could be pushing from your elbow being behind your shoulders. So ultimately that's just... Silliness. If you're doing it to mimic it, that is just foolishness. Yeah. Okay. So the floor press is a good exercise. It's just going to hit the triceps a little bit more, and it's just it's just a shorter range bench press. So it's going to be more more so. So the triceps, you're going to be able to lift heavy weights. It's a good like accessory exercise. Is it going to help you bench more? Probably not. What's going to help you bench more is is probably sticking to the full range of motion bench press, but adding in different varieties of the movement, adding in some tempos, some pauses at different times. That will help. Yeah. Nothing gets floor press. It's fine exercise. Should you make your training partners aware if you get on the Mexican supplements? No. I would... Would you? Say yes. They're probably going to know anyway. Yeah, but it would be interesting for them as an experiment to see, you know, how, in what ways you get better if you do get juicy. And also, if you start to lose your temper a bit, at least they'll know why. True. Yeah, rather than keeping this weird secret. Yeah, because it becomes yeah. a weird thing. Because people will be like, mate, you're fucking looking so big. Or like, mate, Ooh. you're so strong. And you'd be <laughs> like, nothing, bro. no, fuck off, man. I'm just, you no. know, fuck, shut up. And you just fucking <laughs> lose it. Started eating eggs. Shout out Eddie Aboom. Shout out. Wake the fuck up. Wake the fuck up. Okay, details on keeping mount on a much larger opponent. So what I like to do is walk my feet up and onto the hips. I'd say the most dangerous time is when you allow them to get their elbows inside your knees and when you allow them to get like a good quality post on your hips because like a strong man will just simply bench press you through your legs. I love that, yeah. You're going to hamstring curl your legs around them. They're just going to bench press you away and pull their knees to the chest. Especially if it's a fat guy. Some, sometimes like people with really round bellies, you, you can't get your knees low enough to the floor to actually pull yourself down. You've just kind of got like like a squeeze, like you're riding a horse. It's very hard. Imagine trying to ride a horse. This sounds really gay. Trying to ride a horse from the wrong side, the front. <laughs> he, he will use his legs and push you off, my friend. Because, you know, your legs, your knees can't get under. But if it was a really thin horse and you could wrap your legs properly around them, they would never buck you off. So what I'd say to that is, if you can get your feet on the hips, when they bridge you, it would be much harder for them to like transfer the power of, and your and their elbows outside your knees as well. So you can't have knees on the hips and their elbows inside because then they're just going to basically sneak back under. But if you have your feet on the hips and their elbows outside your knees, then when they bridge... First of all, they'll just be like pushing your chest and with their hands, which is pointless. And then second of all, their hips will just be pushing your feet, which will be pushing your knees wide into the floor. So you won't have any like upwards push, basically, and you'll be fine. So that is my suggestion. When you're a massive people, try to do that. And basically always try to isolate their elbows wake from there, lad. Thanks. Fuck yeah. Fucking so. How many days should I go to the gym if I train jiu-jitsu four to five times a week? Just go twice a week, mate. Oh, another one. In what time frame do athletes start seeing? In what af- in what time frame do athletes start seeing results once they start training? 
It depends how hard they're training. Um, Pretty fast. Yeah. Surely the fast, the earlier is faster. Yeah. If you're new to if you're new to weight training, I just get just give everything like a good a good twelve weeks. A twelve weeks is a great t- to like twelve weeks of consistent training. You'd be like, man, I'm yeah. fucking feeling way better. Whoa. Yeah. Even after two weeks, you'd probably be like, I feel way better. Give it, give it twelve to. I've seen ultimately, people. I'll just say a year. Just try, to, look. If if you're gonna start weight training, don't just start and then fucking stop after twelve weeks. That's pathetic. If you're gonna start weight training, just do it for like at least a year minimum, and then by that time you'll be like, okay, I've seen excellent results with this. I'm just gonna keep doing it. So, just fucking stick to it. I mean, even jujitsu. How many fat people have you seen come into the gym, and within like, like they're like really fat, and within like a month they're already like it seems like half the weight and then yeah. within another couple months they're just like you wouldn't even know that they used to be fat yeah. basically like if if you are doing jiu-jitsu and you are not losing weight you have a ridiculous diet and you need to like <laughs> you just sort that out you need to sort your diet out you need to whatever stop drinking go check out your thyroid because that is disgusting one of our buddies um i don't know if you know him actually he used to train with me and dav shout out dav um, let's go Dav let's fucking let's go Dav let's fucking go Dav um, Alex and he he was like a blue belt in jits and he's like I just want to lose a bunch of weight and he lost like 30 kilos in 6 months maybe easy he, uh, maybe a year he just he's like I'm just I'm just not, not easy but no he's like I'm just not going to be fat anymore I mean the people who are fat who actually do jiu jitsu properly like they'll be doing all let's say wrestling drills They'll be pissing, sweating, just like just from standing up and sitting down, and literally, yeah. Like, we've got a couple guys who have come in. I'm not gonna say names, obviously, but they were huge, and now they are like mark remarkably less huge, and it has not been that long. And they're training like three, maybe two to four times a week. I wouldn't even say four times. I'd say like two to three times a week, and you can just see straight away the difference that it's making their face, their belly. Their titties all going down. I think it's uh, uh, like, obviously they're doing much more exercise, but also you're like, okay, I've started doing jiu-jitsu. I've committed to jiu-jitsu. I just don't want to be a fat cat anymore. It's a mental shift to just been like, this is way harder. If I'm fat, I need to lose weight. I'm going to get my shit together. Yeah. Yeah. He's also, I mean, big fatty. generally they're pr- pretty fucking strong as well. So the ones yeah. that are strong physically, but so fat that they're lazy, they tend to stay fat. It's the ones that are strong physically that actually try to think about the sport and do it properly exactly, yeah. that will naturally get skinnier. The fat ones will just be like, oh, how can I make this as easy as possible? And like, you know, sneak through everything without actually ever using any effort and like fat. fake techniques. Yeah, God, fat I hate them. fucking I hate them. If you're fat, just die. All right. <laughs> <laughs> J-Bell will love that. Okay, <laughs> send it to him. Uh, do you agree that leg locks are the inferior game and mountain pressure are superior game plans? Leg locks are just part of the game and mountain pressure are just part of the game. Thank you. You don't need to marry to, what, yourself to either one of those components. I mean, if someone's standing and you're playing guard and they're not leaning over, you've got a choice of either wrestling up or leg locking to wrestling up. So basically, if you're not good at leg locks and you want to be a guard player, good luck to you. Right. What to do in half butterfly and opponent switches hips on you to basically a low over back grip. I would try to get my elbows in and also I would try to get like an outside scoop with my uh, foot. So basically your goal would be to get your near side knee out and start to threaten their back. You know, you can see their back, but there's a barrier between your legs and their back, which is their hips. So if you can make some space between their hips and the floor, then you should be able to get one of your knees out. They also sacrifice balance in the direction their back is facing. So you can try and tip them backwards. And as they overcompensate forwards, you can try and sneak a knee out to get to the back. Mate, we're going to finish up there. I've got to go. Okay. For this next lap, B team. Really good. I've got some more questions, but they'll have to wait. Mate, it was so good to see you again. So good to see you. Oh, you're off to Aiga this tomorrow. Oh yeah, I got a new DVD as well. Buy my new DVD. Buy... Satoshi Rishi issues. and Satoshi Bloshi Mishi Subishi Mitsubishi's new DVD whose DVD? Mitsubishi's uh, it's called Finding the Leg by <laughs> Mitsubishi Ishi <laughs> Ozbeck yeah okay great I've got a DVD as well I don't know even if you can buy it yet it's out though get my strength if it's programs. out you can buy it if it's out you can buy it what's it called? It's building strength for 
BJJ. I said it's, to him, probably do out. something out. Yeah. Anyway, go go BJJ Fanatics. Go check it out. I'll put the link below. I'll find the link. Look Down at the right below. Sloppy outside heel hooks. Feet finder. Chris building strength for BJJ. <laughs> Fucking sick. My best DVD of all time. I promise you it will be worth it on the daily deal. Or if you get it on Billy Billy, that'll be even more worth it. Yep. Guys, remember, like, subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, do all that. Um, buy our stuff. Bis salam. Great to see you, man. Six, What's that mean? Six, What's that mean?